Welcome everybody to another episode of Indie Game Lab Studios. I'm Garth and today I am joined by Andy of Game Changing Design who has designed Inns and Outcasts. Uh, so Andy, <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for being here today. Thanks, glad to be here. Uh, joining Andy, we also have the illustrator of Inns and Outcasts, Jen. Uh, not only is Jen on the voice chat, she's also one of our players today. Uh, so Hello. welcome Jen, hi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, and we've got some of our regulars, Giga Nerd and Andy's brother. Uh, wh I'm sorry, what was your name? Uh, Mike. Mike. Hey, welcome, Mike. So we've got a six-player game of Ins and Outcasts. Some of you may recognize this game because we played it once a while back. Um, and uh, But when we played it before, it was uh, sweet, but it did not have the expansion ready. So now we get to play with the expansion. Uh, that's upside number one. Upside number two is I have turned on the audio this time, so you can, <laughs> um, so uh, we can actually get a full game in. Uh, so, thanks for joining, uh, uh, Andy. Why don't we? Can you talk us through? Let me let me pull up the shot of the table here. Uh, what what is this game, and what can we expect to be playing? Sure. So, In the Outcast is a uh, short uh, little. A uh, game that's supposed to take place in the trope of it's the end of the adventure, everybody's sitting around the table, and now we're divvying up the loot. Um, so it's it's all about getting as much loot as you can as quick as possible, and it's done by uh, taking into account player position, uh, what players are playing, and doing a little bit of social deduction, social deduction work with um, a little bit of strategy. So again, the main goal is to get as much money as possible, uh, it's got a variable goal for based on the number of players. It goes from three to eight players. It takes roughly thirty minutes. Nice. Um, and then uh, the gameplay works in uh, a series of steps that you do each turn. Uh, every five turns ends a round, and then when a round ends, uh, a couple things happen. Like your hand size reduces uh, every every turn. Your hand shrinks a little bit. You don't pick your cards back up. They stay out so players can see what you played, and they can also get a, uh, a little bit of an idea of what you have left to play. Um, and then at the end of every round, uh, you get all your cards back, plus uh, this little head of the table token here rotates to the next person clockwise. And what this does is in the event that we have like two things going off at the same time, we go off of whoever's got the head of the table yeah. or is closest clockwise to okay. it. Uh, nice. That's, that's and great. Then, yeah, and you gain gold two ways. You gain it through either uh, playing a character and getting their their starting gold, which uh, on like a card like this, that's this big gold symbol here that tells you how much money you generate in a turn that sits on this little this little holding table setting card. Mm -hmm. And then the real money is usually through their secondary ability, which is a little treasure chest icon, which can be blocked by a variety of methods. So. Uh, it's all about getting big gains wherever you can, tripping up your opponents wherever you can, nice. so that way you, you can cross that finish line a little more secure. But nice. it stays pretty tight. So starts off a little chaos, and then by the end of the round, when we know have a little bit more information and gets maybe the strategy kind of comes into play a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. So in a six-player game, we're going to fifty-five gold. You said, right? Mm -hmm. is, that, is that true? But uh, yes. if, uh, if you're playing this between D&D campaigns, you can just go to as much gold as you have to divvy up, I imagine. <laughs> sure. Um, another important thing, and this comes in with larger groups like six-player games, we kept interactions limited to uh, range. So oh, if you've ever yeah. played Bang, it's uh, two players to your left, two players to your right. That is the maximum range that you have for your effects if the card says in range. Mm. But... Uh, a lot there are effects that don't care about range like uh, for example when a when a w initiative one character uses their targeting token they don't have uh, stipulation on range nice. so so yeah in a six player game everyone's in range except for the player across from you so that's the yeah. one thing we'll have to just keep track uh perfect i think we're ready to roll so why don't we get started and uh and uh, start playing and see how, see how it goes okay yeah so everybody just take a card play it face down and uh, there's a little snap point that'll kind of lock in at the top of your play mat if you if you choose to do so. Ah, uh, yes, current card. There we go. Nice. I'm pretty sure I picked the right call. I'm just. <laughs> All right. And then, and... much like in D D, we start doing initiative calls, and uh, it's based <laughs> nice. off whatever card you played. 
Um, if you can't remember, remember Alt Shift lets you peek. Um, but if anyone played a one, go ahead and flip that now because all ones flip, and then when two is called, three, three, four, five, six. Whenever you hear your number, everybody flips their card that has that number. So, anyone want to play a one? No one, so. Very trusting first round. All right. Uh, <laughs> any twos? Yeah. Oh, that's bad to play a two when no one played a one, right? It's not ideal. <sighs> but you still get your starting gold, which is okay. Uh, the monk actually prefers not to get his starting gold because their whole thing is about getting, uh, if they have no starting gold, their loot ability is that they gain 10. I see. Yeah. But there's still ways to shed your starting gold. Um, the gold is kept here on your table setting card just in case abilities come up later that cost gold. So the oh. monk might be able to spend his money to get down to zero. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any threes? Okay. Now, this is interesting. Um, so a three would normally be able to block a two that's in range, but there are no twos in range right now because oh, you're across. opposite of each other. Yeah, nice. Yep. Um, and so the important thing to note is that we resolve the loot abilities at the end of the round, uh, at the end of the turn. Um, but if you get an icon with a little eyeball, that is immediately resolved. So like for mm. the monk, he would have resolved his, uh, his reveal ability right away. I but see. there were no targets, so it doesn't really do anything. Okay. Any fours? I played a four. That's no. not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Jen's in range, and I am absolutely blocking oh, her. Oh, that's a no. big block. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to block, it's just like, you know, tapping in magic, just turn them sure. 90 degrees, and that, that'll give them the indication. So that turns Jen's, like... What could have been like twelve gold into just three, just the three that yeah. the cultists show up to the table with. All right, sad times. Yep. All right. Uh, well, the bad news is I I'm, I played a four. Did anyone play a five? Yeah, they did. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now the thing you guys you you do go in uh, in order based on the table setting card. If you oh. if anyone chooses to block me, they could choose not to. That's always an option. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> But odds are. And so if you guys want to block me and don't want to get on the mic, the easiest way to do it is just rotate my card. Yeah, I'm sure nerd. Yeah, nerds. nerds uh... There we go. <laughs> All right. Nice. All right. And then last but not least, we have six. The dragon. Okay. So remember, the first thing to do is get your starting gold. Okay. And then we handle the reveal ability. Are they not in okay. cooperative area? Okay. All right. So everyone, you can take three gold. You're welcome. Yep. Yeah, but there is a there is a caveat. There, and there's that's... no there's no catch. Just everyone take three gold. That's fine. <laughs> yep. So I'm absolutely taking advantage of that because I'm going to get hosed this round. <laughs> All right. Everyone take their three gold that wanted it. Okay. I think here. Let me give you a hand there, bro. There you go. And that three gold, just so you guys know, doesn't go on the table setting card. That goes directly into your player hoard. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and so that... Yeah. Uh, and now I've got an ability that says gain two gold for each player that used this card's ability. So... Yep. I believe that's everybody. everybody. So that's, that's ten gold. Ten gold. Yeah. Nice. Is scoring? Yep, now we score all our gold and uh, put it in the uh, thing. Don't take your cards away just yet because the thing has to do a little calculation based on how many unblocked players there are. It looks like there's two in range of you. So you'll get an extra two gold for your thing. And then the Lord is going to get uh, one, two, three, four, four four targets worth of his ability because there are no other halflings on the board. Wow. That's actually a bigger yeah. bigger swing than the dragon. Oh, I can't. Oh, dragon can't block the lord. Sad. No. Um, the, the so usually the the lord has its own problem to worry about, and that's that the one is really good at at ticking these guys off. I see. Oh, and then the six the weakness sixes of... are generally wild cards. So. Nice. Yeah. A little. Okay, I see. Yeah, two beats one, three beats two. And all the way down until one beats five. Neat. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then just, uh, yeah, take your card, drop it back here on the player mat where it says discard, and then uh, there's four little, like, lock spots where it'll automatically pop in without, like, going into your hand. Sweet. Okay, and then we just rinse and repeat. That's that's the whole game. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna change my mind. Okay, looks like everyone's set. Uh, anyone? Uh oh. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, well, we resolve an order starting with the the person with the head of the table token, but you get to place a target token wherever you like on a on a player on an unrevealed player's table setting card. So it's it's me or <laughs> yeah, we are me. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now the bounty hunter is a little different. When you go to place your table setting card, you'll notice there's six little numbers around each table setting card. The number that you want to place it on is what you set, what you're suspecting their initiative is going to be. Okay. And then grab your starting goal and all that good stuff. Yeah. You guys know what's up. Let me give you a hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool, cool. All right. So, uh, anybody play a two? <laughs> It'd be a I, good time for I it. I know, I almost did, but I thought it was too obvious. Oh, no. I, I also thought I was going to get to play a two right now, but it looks like that's not the case. But I did wow. play a three. Same. Did anyone else play a three? Okay. Well, this is interesting. That's, that's the round. Um, so <laughs> neither of us get our starting goal, but we do get to calculate our... Uh, there's a lot of villains out. This is a good round for, for the yeah, For everybody, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, now, since the bounty hunter was not correct, uh, they do not get their loot ability. Their loot ability is effectively zero because I thought you played a five. I see. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So for me, it's <laughs> 12. Or no, it's it's both of us are going to get uh, nine gold plus two. So 11 gold for the cultists. Because there are three villains and one mercenary. Okay, but we don't get our our starting gold gets stolen by someone, right? Is that the? Is that uh, the yeah, everybody everybody who played a thief gets the starting gold uh, as their loot ability. Okay. So, like that's yeah, you know, basically everybody who played a thief gets three extra gold for their turn, which is good. And I don't get the three, but I do get. Um. Uh, you get your loot ability. But yeah, I get my eleven. Is, okay. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't mind getting stolen from, I guess. I know, it's not the worst fate, <laughs> but it can it can really hurt if you play to five. Like that's when it's that's yeah. when it hurts the most and that's Got when it. the thieves are happiest. Okay. That's exciting. Oop, sorry. There you go. I'm gonna make sure everybody gets their tokens back. Yeah. Uh, you were good. Oh that's mine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm, okay. Time. It is time. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, anyone? I didn't play one. Too risky. Everyone's yeah, got their cards twos. still. Any twos out? No twos out. All right. Threes. Oh, there's a two. Oh, wait. We got a two. We have a two. Never mind. Oh, monk. Nice. Okay. This is going to be fun. Threes. Any threes? Nope. Oh, my fours, gosh. I guess. Is it four o'clock? It's four o'clock. Well, that's not so bad. Okay. So the cool thing is when you guys are looking at matches and uniques, you don't count yourself in that match so even though you guys are right next to each other and you played fours that's actually okay nice it works out really well um okay so do we have any fives 
Okay. So now you guys get to debate um, if you're blocking or not. Uh, obviously, like Mike can't block uh, Jen because he's across the table, but that doesn't mean that she's out of the safe zone. I'll block Jen. Okay. And then... Yeah. All right. So fives, uh, get your starting gold, and then I'll go ahead and flip my six when we're ready. <laughs> this is going to be good. Five. Okay. Nice. I played a goblin because uh -huh. I love goblins. So this creates a little mini game that's going to go on. Uh, goblins start an auction. It starts with me. I can bid up to one gold, and then uh, it goes to the next player clockwise all the way around. And you can either increase or you can pass. And if you pass, you're out for good. Once everybody's out, the winning bid has to pay that money to the middle. And uh, I get that bid times three. But what you're bidding on is for me to not block you. So if uh, my bomb goes off, it's going to affect all four players that are around me. But you'll notice it can't affect the person that's across the table from me. So uh -oh. I'll just leave that little bit of information out there okay. for you all. You can blow up all you want, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to bid one. All right, Giga, do you want to control the bomb? I guess we should probably come up with a good method for, like, you know, if, if you choose to increase or pass, just move your money to the front because you need to increase it to two. But if you choose not to, just, you know, like, uh... I haven't figured out a good way in Tabletop Simulator to silently say no. I guess you could flip your table. Yeah, go ahead and flip okay. your target token if you choose to pass. Okay. Okay. So, Jen. Pass. Okay. All right. Well, I might bid on this because I don't want Nerd to be able to spend his two exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, the question is, are you going to increase the cost for yourself or are you going to let it go around? Well, if you pass out now, then you don't get to come back in later. Uh, I'm going to pass. Uh, oh, and just to answer the question that was asked in the chat channel, um, you can't unblock yourself uh, if you're blocked. Like, the, there's specific abilities we're planning on later that'll let you unblock. Oh, that's kind of fun. Um, not at the moment. Like, it's it's kind of like a, once you're, once you're down and out, you're out. Uh, what did you say you were going to do? I passed and nerd paid. Okay, gotcha. So nerd paid two. Uh, or is bidding to... Yeah. I'm going to pass. Okay. Uh, I can't bid higher, and I think... Yeah, so Nerd gets it for two, and then Nerd gets to choose whether or not everybody uh, gets blocked or not. That would be a costly block. I think he's going to probably not block, right? Well, maybe, but, I mean, look at these, uh, look at these l lords here. Oh, that's true. They're and uh, while the mages are not have been neutralized, the, you can at least knock out one of the lords from getting the you know four gold gain. Either way, I'm happy with my seven. <laughs> uh, well, I get I didn't I didn't pay, so I still get my starting goal. That'll be six off the ability. Sorry, seven for the turn. Yeah. So what's the what's it gonna be, nerd? Are you gonna tap everybody around you? It's all or nothing. Oh, Christ, I was muted the entire time, and nobody's going to blow up. Okay, All gotcha, right. gotcha. Bomb cool. stays. I like my money. Yeah, heck yeah. Okay, so now we can collect all of our uh, yeah. treasure chest. Loot abilities, go. <laughs> Non-halfling. That is a non-halfling. Oh, that is a halfling. Uh, yep, the lords are halflings, so they do not count Should for themselves. Should be six. Yep, six gold for each lord. Five. I'm at 35 already. Whew. Nice. I'm at 23 if I did my math right. Not bad for three rounds. It's nice to not get blocked. Okay, I like this. And I can look around the table and see what everyone's played. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Uh, 
Let's. Well, yeah, that would have been great earlier, but no. Ugh. Yeah, Nerd is currently uh, rocking at 30. Versus 35. So, yeah. Yep, yep. All right. So, did anyone play a one this round? No one? Chickens. I know. <laughs> Twos? I played a two. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, when well, do I know I played once? Yeah. Get your starting gold. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, there we go. Yep, yep. Okay, any threes? Oh, yeah. Oh, crap, it's oh, a hard party. Oh, shoot, okay. Well, <laughs> that doesn't oh, matter. It's cultists, so this is actually a pretty good time for for cultists to pop because uh, only they might only score one. Oh wow! All yeah, right. weird. We're all blocked. Blocking you. All right, we're uh, all blocked. Yeah, that's Fine. true. The threes can choose to block. Um, maybe yeah. monk. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you should probably uh, block the monk. And I will block uh, one of the other two. Yeah. It won't hurt the guards because there's nothing for them. Yeah, to do we anything. didn't. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Uh, no, the so the monk I mean, has to have a a, a, a a steel token has to be out on one of the table setting cards to use the monk's ability. If there's mo no if there's no thieves, there's no ability for the monk to go off. I really like the dynamics of this game where there's like it's not just like two beats one, three beats two. Like there's some extra sort of things going on. Like yeah, the two it's really rough. needs a one to shut down. Or I'll, like it's, it feels like yeah. I I was once told in a play test this is rock paper scissors with extra steps. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's the best kind of game though, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go it. Uh, maybe fours, fives. There we go. <laughs> Nicely played. Okay. Nice. Uh, sweet. I get six. Oh yeah, because cultists are also evil. So good job, cultists. Well, no, only I get the six. He only gets three from me. Mm. Oh yeah, because of the <laughs> Lord. Lord is also a villain, of course it is. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I'm happy with four. I didn't think I was going to get more than that anyway this turn. Yeah, I mean, I got nothing. So yeah. <laughs> I got my four gold, and that's that's it. All right. And this is the last play of this turn now. Correct. Okay. And we get all our options back. But now we know almost exactly what everyone's playing with. Mm -hmm. You got mm. a 50 50 shot of figuring it out. <laughs> well. All right. And then you got to wonder if they're going to play it normal or if they're going to play it out of spite. I know, right? Uh, uh, maybe. I'm going to make some change real quick just so it's a little easier to read. All right, yeah. Also gives you something to do in the downtime. Okay, I'm going to take two ones. Drop this in for another tenor. These people wonder what kind of chicanery I'm up to. <laughs> All right. Uh, but, 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 but. Everybody get their cards? Yeah. I think so. All right. Anyone want to do the call off? I don't have to do it every time. <laughs> once, any ones? Do we have I chickens play, here? I I played a one. Oh, you're not scared of Jen? Jen is the one with the guard left. I was worried that Jen was going to get us. Eh, I'm confident <laughs> that Jen is going to go for chaos. Plus, if she does it, she always does this to me, so I'm not super worried about it. It's just <laughs> the way of the world. Uh, I think. I think you played a six. That's my guess. So we're going to put that 
on the six. Any twos? Yeah, me. Ah, oh, poop. Ha, okay. <laughs> I, I chose correctly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I still get the four starting gold, so I'm not super upset about that. Uh, don't forget to get... I was also worried that you were going to play your one, and if you did, then uh, I couldn't get stolen from. I see. Because <laughs> that had already yeah. been revealed. Uh, Jen, don't forget um, that you maybe want to use the ability. Just maybe. Yeah, who did... Uh... I, I targeted over here. Okay, yeah, I'll use my ability. Okie dokie. Just... Nice. Now, do we have any cultists of other threes? No threes. No threes. Okay. Do we have any fours? I'm a cult. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh man, I was right too. I mm, mm, well, salt. since we see the five over there, do we want to reveal the six? Ugh. it hurts. Jen, you wound me. <laughs> what six is it? It's the dragon. Yeah, I'm taking yeah. that money. Yes, please. I'm getting that, I'm getting that dragon, dragon gold. So, how much is it with the mage? Uh, did anyone choose not to use the dragon? I used it. This is my turn. So Mike did. Uh, nerd, I take it and guess. Uh, I did. did. Yep, yep. I it did. looks like everybody did. So that's ten gold for the for the dragon. Because I definitely did. It's interesting. I, I feel like uh, the, the sixes are sort of weird because one six sort of the, the dragon seems to accelerate the game towards an end, whereas the goblin might tend to actually stall the game a little bit. What's funny is that the dragon can get blocked by the goblet, and that stings oh. so badly. <laughs> okay, I like that. Because everyone is more than happy to take that dragon money if they see a goblin out. Because oh, the dragon gosh. really got to stick. Oh, that's so brutal! I didn't think of that. I love that goblin trumps dragon. That just that's yeah. so that's so funny. With high explosives. <laughs> All right, four for each unique initiative. One. Two. 12. Well, remember, there's... I, uh, I don't there's, have this one, so I have four, yeah. six, two. So that's All still, right, yeah, yeah. You guys, like, the, uh, the, the fours don't count for each other, so oh, since you are clumped, you're not going to get everybody, but uh, nobody else matched. Like, these three are open game for the most yeah. part. Oh, wait, if there's two mages that are in range, do we not get the four from that? Correct. Not you, you look at it as a set. I see. And uh, anybody in that range that matches uh, okay. is not considered unique. Got it. So we only get... Okay, so each of the mages only get eight. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, I guess the important thing is... Well, one mage will get five gold. Uh, another mage would get seven gold. And then the other one would get five gold, I think, if I did my math right. Because for like, a unique, um, that two unique on range. Yeah, because when you're across the table from them, they don't yeah. you don't get nothing. So I'm oh, getting, sorry, I'm getting from the monk and the dragon. Okay. Yeah, you would not get gens, but you would get the three and the four from me if you played an alchemist, which you did. Oh, whereas the mages uh, are just a flat flat for you. Sorry, I thought everybody played alchemists. Yeah, no mage. <laughs> uh, how much is it for um, the end? For what? Yeah, for oh, the to end. the end? Uh, 55. 55. 55. Okay. Which I should probably write down with. 50. I have 50. Oh, 52. Oh, man. That's close. Or 18. 30. 48. 52. Yup. Wow. Well, uh, we'll get a fresh round, and that'll probably... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless everybody just starts stealing and uh, blocking you. Is there, Odds are. Is there safe ways to get gold with, like, just a... Let's see. If I told you, then you would win the game. It's <laughs> <laughs> probably a safe way. Let's see here. Oh, I see it. Oh, I do see it with safe way. Okay, and then head of the table passes because we've ended a round, so... No, we just play the turn. 
I mean, we have time. We could play a whole round. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just uh, I'm just going... <laughs> yeah. As far as rules as written, yeah. like, the goal is just to get over 55, and then you end the round, everybody scores for that, and uh, it's game over. But, I mean, that's the nice thing, is you da- you guys don't have to play the way that I wrote the rules. You can always, you know... I can't, like, visit people's houses and be like, you're playing my game wrong! <laughs> it's creepy. Don't do that. I know. Well, I wish, I wish we could do that. <laughs> I don't know if I'd have the, uh, the travel budget for that. <laughs> So we all agree we are going to rob uh, and block him. Of course. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> I will. I will absolutely rob and block him because I am well in position <laughs> to do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have uh, any ones? No ones. Okay. Do we have any twos? I yes. played a two. Well, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because there's nothing that can mess with me now. Yeah, well, technically, Actually, you could have gotten stolen steal. from. Oh, yeah, stolen yeah. and blocked. Oh, I needed yep. to get stolen from and blocked. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Any threes? Any fours? Oh, my. And the other thing is, uh, since it's just the game ends, it's always possible for someone to get a really killer round and like, oh, rubber band that's true. past you. So okay. ending the round isn't always the best best thing to do. I, uh, I didn't think of that. I might have, <laughs> I might have messed myself up. That's okay. A defies. Mm, <laughs> sounds like some chaos is going to happen. Oh, gosh. Sixes. Six. Oh, a goblin and a dragon. <laughs> goblin and a dragon. That's beautiful. Okay. Hmm. I'll take three. Okay. Well, I'm going to take the three for sure. Yeah. There's no reason not to. <laughs> and I'm starting it off with one. Let me uh, pop these over here and take out a 10 spot just so I can calculate the score a little easier. All right. So it's to you, Mike, if you want to increase or pass. Uh, I'll bid the two for sure. Okay. So, yeah, we'll take your two gold off the top and put it off the side there just to make it easy. Uh, I am going to pass and let the dragon decide if they want to spend three gold on the goblin. Uh, Giga, I think everyone used the dragon. Yes, so far. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's clever. All right, I mean, there All are right. some cases where even if you're out of range, it makes sense to grab the power. Yeah. Honestly, that's choice. one of the reasons that I love being out yeah. of range of the goblins because then I can guarantee to blow up everybody around me. <laughs> exactly. Suffer the zero consequences. All right. Jen passes. Oh. Um. Chicken, chicken. Pass. Okay. So Mike takes it for two. Oh, cool. And I get six. Okay. Okay, so yeah, Mike chooses not to not to blow up. Okay, and that's uh, that's the game. Now we just got to tally score and see who wins. So I had a question for the uh, alternate here. On the... So there's what two different unique initiatives I use. Uh, in range of view, there are one, two, or yeah. Yeah, uh, the the two guards. No, there's nobody that's unique and in, in, in opposite to you because there's the the dragon and the goblin are six, and the guard and the guard are two. So. Those don't count as unique. No, because they're matching to each other. Okay, so I don't get any. Yeah. Oh shoot! I should have blew you guys up. Well, I'll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much of a shift that would have been. Well, I don't know. Probably. I would have felt better. Yeah. I'm at 31. Um, let's see here. Let me try and organize this a little bit just so I can see easier if that's okay. It, it. 34 plus 25 is 59. Yeah, 59. Oh, you too? 
Uh, no, no, I just uh, can't do. I'm at uh, 51. Nice. 20, 25, plus 12. So that's 37 plus 9. Yeah. This is a, I like the games where not knowing how to play is actually an advantage because no one can play against you. <laughs> that's true. And, I mean, if you get to the point where, like, you don't want to, like, meta strategy, you can always just pick a card blind and play it. <laughs> sure. And then no one can no one can figure out what you're gonna do because even you don't know. That's true. Yeah, I love uh, games I, like this. Yeah, it's fun. Nice. Well, I'm at a paltry 31, so good job. Nice. <laughs> Everybody else. <laughs> so yeah, so last time we played this, I remember there was only one sort of there was only the initial base set. So everyone just the one through six was just locked as everyone was playing a thief and everyone had the goblin, etc. I like mm -hmm. the addition of basically getting to sort of choose which of the two versions of the cards you will play, mm -hmm. like you're going to add to your deck. Especially yeah, and since... eventually, um, eventually, like I said, with each with each version of, of expansion that we make for this, the nice thing is each expansion is a standalone copy of the game. Right. And it also lets you add more to each game that you're going to be doing. Nice. Yeah, that's... Right. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. I like that it's so the ones like they all act sort of the same as each other, but like since so much of the game happens in this first round and you can kind of it's like hidden that whole first round what which six the player might have, there's mm -hmm. like that extra little layer. Yeah, and you can always like keep a card back in theory until like the the final round and yeah. you're like, I had a goblin the whole time. Like, I know. <laughs> so Yeah, nice. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, I like the chaos, the dragon and the goblins, like, um, that's fun. So, yeah, yeah, is there, like, sort of a, kind of a, it seems like there's, like, a little bit of a theme for each of the different taverns <laughs> or inns that, that sets? Yeah. So, the base game was called the Wobblin Wagon, uh, Wobblin hence the wagon. little wagon wheel. Okay, yeah. Uh, and that was just meant to be your, your traditional fantasy tavern, mm -hmm. people getting their, getting their drink on, getting a little sloshed and... Uh, their tagline was, uh, when you visit the wagon, you'll find yourself wobbling home. Um, and then the second inn that we made is the Jaded Dragon Inn. Um, mm. And that is meant to be a little bit of a gambling parlor uh, where everybody's kind of got high risk, high reward abilities. As I see. Okay. Nice. And then like the next expansion where we're kind of like tooling around with is going to be uh, a little bit like a bayou swamp uh, slash pirate theme. Sweet. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of interesting mechanics that we have for that one too. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing that now that it was the expansion had higher risk stuff like the bounty hunter is higher risk, higher reward than the thief. The monk mm -hmm. is also higher risk, higher reward. I feel like. Well, yeah, and like, sometimes. you know, it, it really just depends on, on your level of confidence and strategy. Yeah. Um, like, the guard is theoretically one of the most money-making cards in the game because they gain money. If 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 you lay it out right, yeah, you could there's get a chance that you'll get, like... Uh, 20? Is that how it 24 caps 24 if they yeah. don't get stolen from. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but the odds of that happening are pretty slim yeah. um, in that scenario. Um, but... Uh, yeah, if you can if you can do it, that's that's probably one of the highest gold gains you can get in the game. We've nice. kind of balanced that as our maximum and worked around it. Oh, okay. But those edge cases are really hard to achieve. The mage is actually like surprisingly one of the most you know like it can get those big gains, but it's really hard to pull off. I see. Yeah. Everybody around you has to like play something different, and you have to not get blocked in the same pro in the same turn, which yeah. can be. Chaotic, especially since they only have the two gold if a goblin drops. It's like, oh no, not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Interesting. Very cool. So yeah, so um, I saw you at Gen Con. Uh, yeah, it was nice to meet you. Yeah, Thanks. that was that was fun. Um, you didn't. Uh, so you were just kind of going around, just playing some games, talking to some folks, right? Like at the Gen um, Con. Yeah. Well, at Gen Con, we, uh, Jen and I both signed up through the Indie Game Alliance. They did a, uh, oh, right. and this is a, it's a really good event. I would highly recommend people do it. Uh, if you've got a game ready to publish, they do a publisher designer speed dating yeah, thing. Um, that. This is the first year they brought it back and it was really cool um, because uh, we had like 
five minutes with a publisher um, where they could, you know, hear our pitch. We could chat back and forth. Uh, and then we switched to the next publisher. So that's awesome. It Yeah, it's it's a little tough um, because you have to get into it. Uh, yeah. They don't just they don't just like say, hey, anybody can go. You have to get your sale. You have to make a sell sheet, which is uh, a process. And um, thankfully, I happen to have an amazing graphic designer uh, <laughs> that that rocked out our sell sheet. Um, I can send a link to it. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Speaking of the graphic design, I love. Uh, I mean, this is very. It's a very. Uh, the UX is great on this. It, it's very clear. Like, yeah, you get this. Then after the ground, you look at that icon. I, I love it. So props, Jen. And I, I have this is the first time I'm seeing the expansion art as well. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm loving Bounty Hunter looks sick. Um, cultists, awesome. So yeah, Jen, Jen how how is it go? Are you um, is this like your big illustration project, or do you have other things uh, in the works? Or um, this is probably my biggest illustration project that mm -hmm. I've done. Um, I do a little kind of freelance on the side. Nice. Um, and then I'm just kind of right now doing a few illustrative works um, just to get back into illustration. I'm trying to do it full time soon. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that's awesome. Um, well, all I can say is watch out. The, the robots are coming from your, for your job. <laughs> have you seen the well they say that but honestly <laughs> yeah, like the, the the really the one thing that i do have to admit when it comes to all that is that it's it's a useful tool to get your you know get your ideas to an illustrator yeah in fewer steps that's that's where the technology works i agree yeah and then like the graphic design stuff i mean so far the robots can't handle that so um <laughs> yeah well <laughs> that requires actual information yeah yeah <laughs> And you know, maybe maybe in a in maybe like five ten years, we might be singing a different tune. But for yeah. now, I'm pretty confident that it's yeah, going to yeah, be no, okay. Speaking as a autonomous vehicle researcher, you're probably fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and drop. Where would you like me to put this uh, cell sheet PDF? Uh, is it? Are you? I'm, I'm looking at the TTS. Is it in the TTS? Uh, or we can, no. we can drop it in the Discord. I can we can we can link to it uh, after the yeah. fact. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or I I could bring it into the tabletop simulator. I guess there's sure. uh, one second here. Objects component. Uh, yeah. So did you have any luck at this uh, the pitching event? Yeah, uh, we had uh, five publishers who were really interested in our game. Uh, I'm still working on following up with them. Um, uh -huh. We are actually talking to a sixth publisher that wasn't at the uh, the thing, but uh, we ran into them through social media and they are, um, they're really cool. We're, we're happy because they're kind of local to us. So nice. it's easier to, uh, to show them, um, you know, uh, our stuff. If, if they wanted to see it in person, we could theoretically yeah, drive. Just, yeah. It's not a short drive, but it's a drive That's, and we can do the deal nice. in person. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, which is great, uh, but even even so, we've we've also talked with like uh, back and forth. We're thinking of maybe talking to, um, like Slugfest would be another one that we want to submit to. But before we do that, the the tricky part with this is that this is our sales sheet, by the way. Ah, okay, nice, beautiful. Um, uh, with, when you go to submit to some publishers, they ask for exclusivity for like three months. And that means that we have to be very careful who we select. We can't just spam a bunch of publishers at once. Mm. Um, we really need to pick the ones that would be the most likely clientele, but, uh, we're in talks right now with someone under consideration. So Sweet. Yeah. that's wonderful. Oh yeah. Look at this. Yeah. That's got, I mean, that's basically the whole rule book too. I love it. Yep, it's it's the whole rule book. It's every component um, because we yeah. didn't have the expansion art uh, like finalized uh, before Gen Con. We didn't want to rush it. Sure. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's everything. Uh, we didn't really put the uh, bother to like explain the game because the game's explained on the player uh, right the player tiles. But um, and we got a lot of really positive feedback about nice. the sell sheet. Um, and I'm pretty good at pitching. So yeah. most of the publishers were really happy, like, and 
we were since we were like really polished, we stood out a little bit too. Yeah. That isn't to say that you guys have to don't don't necessarily do that. Like make your game uh get it to where you get a good look and yeah. function, but it does not have to be final look. Mm -hmm. Um and a lot of publishers that can be like a turnoff for them because they have yeah. to take it in and make it fit their publishing brand. But if you're gonna go self publish, it's gotta be that fidelity for you anyway. So yeah, yeah I agree. Um having yeah. People say you don't need to be polished, don't need to have all the final art. I kind of almost disagree. Like, <laughs> like I mean, it, yes. I think we, it depends on your goal. Yeah. Like, um, if you know you're going to take it to Kickstarter, you need to have final art. Sure, yeah. There's, you know, like Kickstarter, you basically have to have the game ready to rock. Yep. It um, used to be like that, by the way. But these no. days, people are, you know, have been burnt enough times that they're like, yeah, we, the game needs to be ready so we can well, know what we're getting and, into. And all the giants have entered the Kickstarter oh, exactly. space, too. I mean, yeah. the fact that AEG is running games through Kickstarter, are you crazy? Yeah, like, that's, that's, that's like, you know, and, you know, to their, to their credit, their whole thing is we're going to make the game better with your pledges, which sure. is fine. Yeah, but, I mean, that's the idea for everyone. But, yeah, it does, does sort of uh, tilt the it, scales. Yeah. Sure, it's a higher bar to entry. Yeah. Um, but board games are always kind of a tough space to enter anyway. Like, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, you know, like, but there are there are opportunities for indie people to distribute their games that don't involve filling your garage up with boxes. Exactly. Um, yep. <laughs> like that's one of the reasons that we like the IGA, uh, the Indie Game Alliance. Like they will do distribution at conventions for you, which is super cool. Yeah. Um, but it's not free right. <laughs> and you don't get as much of a margin because you're not selling out of stores. So, you know, um, there's, there's caveats. It's, it's important when you're developing your game, once you're past like the content creation stage and mm -hmm. you start getting into your post, you really need to start doing your cost analysis. Like, Oh, how can I like our one of the big features of our game? It's all cardboard. Everything is cardboard. We yep. can print this locally uh, That's in true. the US yeah. theoretically, and it wouldn't be great, but it would be better than nothing. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, a game, yeah, based both, mostly on cards and cardboard. I've definitely seen it's it's more expensive to print in the US than in China, but in the current state of affairs, like with the uh, shipping and all that nonsense, it probably evens yeah. out to being only a little more expensive. Yeah. yeah. If you're, if you're okay with doing like just a U.S. release to get the game out and get sure. some numbers yeah. up so you it's can true. take it to an international publisher. Yeah. That's a great way to go. Um, just as long as you're not losing your shirt in the process. Right. right. Like that's yeah. the, the big thing is it's, you know, insulating yourself from the risk as yeah. much as possible. Exactly. So, so players, thanks for joining us. Uh, how, how was, uh, uh, nerd, how did you feel about, I think you, you went for some high risk, high reward sort of plays this game. Yeah. Uh, most of my cards besides a lot were high risk, high reward cards. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I think, did you have any big turns or I think you got shut down. I saw you get shut down a couple times, sadly. Not shut down, but uh, it didn't really click at certain times. Yeah. I had one nice round with the monk, but oh yeah, nice. Yeah. And the lord, the yeah. lord where I had maximum payout with him. Oh yeah, heck yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely like I I feel like there's strategy in this game, but it's not like if it was pure strategy, nerd would have crushed us all, of course. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, we've had a lot of uh, one of the one of our favorite things after after a roundup when uh, when we're doing playtests is getting people to argue about which is the best card. Oh, and that's a good call. The debates that you get out of that are fantastic. That's actually really good. <laughs> mm -hmm. What Giga? What do you so think? Much blocking... Sorry, go ahead. I think there's so much stuff blocking other stuff that there is no best card. Yeah, that's kind of the the premise like we we've got it we, we've got it we feel like it's pretty well balanced but yeah. that doesn't mean that players don't have their opinions and the opinions are what we like to hear because um i definitely don't want to feel like a card is underwhelming because then i'm not going to pick it right yeah i think there's different there's best cards for different scenarios and i think the best mm -hmm. card is the one that blocks the best card <laughs> so yeah well i mean i know for me um i played the game and various iterations all the way to the beginning. Um, and this is one of the, the few times we've been able to play with 
almost a full table where the range comes into effect. So I feel like, you know, your strategy shifts when yeah. the number of players come into effect too. Like, for example, in this game that we played, we only made it to like a round and change. Whereas yeah. like if it's, you know, two, three player games, uh, you get a lot more rounds and so you can kind of get comfortable with your strategies and then start to pick apart other people's strategies. Yeah, yeah, it did feel a little bit quick to me. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I like that, you know, it's a totally different game. It, well, not totally different game, but, you know, the more players you have, it changes the dynamic more than just, uh, you know, by extending the game website. Yeah, no, that's a good call. Yeah, it's it's definitely, that's an important thing. Like, replayability is big. This kind of game, I feel like, has that not only because it's just kind of uh, uh, sort of a lighthearted, I think the game would change depending on how many beers you've had, um, slash how many <laughs> players are playing, right? It's great. Um, well, I, I feel like, like two more players, players that, that um, you know, we talked about briefly that the... Uh, strategy isn't everything but i feel like in a smaller game it becomes more of a thing so but when you have more people you know you're probably going to be playing with people in different, different skill levels and stuff yeah so like uh in the bigger game it's probably more pleasurable than if you're a new player or or you know kind of new to the whole concept uh, than just sort of like heads up or, or a three-way yeah i agree with that i agree with that yeah it's it's um definitely yeah, when you get down to like two or three player games, like yeah, there's definitely more things you can be you can be grinding your gears in your head a little bit more and kind of figuring out like okay, their optimal play is this, um, things like that. So it's nice to have a more chaos table, especially as a new yeah. player. Yeah, and in like a three and four player game, um, you really you know there's no room for you to like hide in in a sure. six and seven and eight player game. You're not going to be targeted every round, and never you know it's going to be harder for people to like go. Oh, everybody target this person because they're two points ahead. Like the game tends to like give a little bit more mm -hmm. of a of an even field for people to yeah. You know, That's like, true. Yeah, yeah. So, um, nice. one of the mechanics that we're toying around with adding is uh, an in card that's going to sit in the middle, and the idea is that you can spend money out of your hoard to do special effects for the whole table. Um, generally beneficial effects. So the idea is that the front runner is spending money out of their hoard, and that benefits the player in the back. Um, okay. Nice. So to help tighten up games a little bit and give the game a little bit more feel. Um, yeah. For what the locations are. Oh, that's cool. Each inn could have their own like special brew yeah. that you can buy around for everyone or whatever. Yeah, like nice. the idea is it's going to be like the waiters and the waitresses and the, you know, like the bar the barmaids and the, you know, the tavern keepers, that kind of stuff. Give give them a little bit more character. Love it. Yeah. Um, character is something that this game is not short on, but I, I think, yeah, there's always room for more. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thanks for, thanks to everyone for joining us. Thanks, uh, Andy for kind of talk walking us through this and showing off this beautiful new version and thank you Jen for making it beautiful um, and thanks as always to Nerd and Giga for being our uh, players slash um, uh, reviewers slash uh, stiff competition so and thanks of course to the viewers for ch checking out the game um, I think that'll I think that kind of wraps us up right um, yeah. yeah, so until next time, thanks everyone for, for tuning in and uh yeah, we'll catch you catch you next week. Sounds good. See thanks ya. for having us. <laughs>